In this video we're going to work on minor keys and how you can use them in your playing to make a whole different variety of chord progressions and make yourself sound even more interesting and versatile as a guitarist. Although a lot of songs are played in major keys, minor keys are a great way to have darker sounding music and express yourself in a variety of different ways. And learning the minor keys and the ways to use them is a great way to just become a more versatile musician. The great thing about minor keys is they're essentially the same thing as the major key, just in a different order. So if you know how the major keys work, then it's very, very easy to figure out all the chords that you're going to use in your minor key. So this is the third part of my series on making your own chord progressions. If you haven't seen the first two, check the link in the description below this video. It's going to make it a lot easier to understand this stuff because it is building on that. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to use different minor chord progressions and the differences and how by learning all the stuff in the major key, it's incredibly simple to shift that into the minor key so that you just double the amount of stuff that you can play. So in 20 seconds, here's how you shift everything from a major key that you already know into a minor key. The great part about the minor key is it's the exact same chords as that you're going to use in the major key. So say we're starting with our six note pattern from our G major scale. And we know we've got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. Well, the minor scale that goes along with this, the relative minor scale to the G major, is E minor. And the only difference is it uses the exact same chords, it's just going to start on your sixth chord. Which here is your E minor chord. So E minor is the relative minor scale to G major. And that's the same with this pattern no matter where you are in the neck. So say we want to play our relative minor from A major. So we use our same pattern. We go to our sixth note, and then our sixth note in this case is going to be F sharp. So we know instantly that F sharp is the relative minor scale to A major. And what that means is just it uses all the exact same chords. We're just basing our home note or our root note on the 6 instead of the 1. But the chords are going to be exactly the same. You can hear how we've got kind of a nice resolution to the 6 chord while using the exact same chords. So with just that, you know how to make any minor key. Anytime you see something played in a minor key or you want to have a minor key, then you just got to find the relative major and use all the same chords. Another quick example, say we want to play right here. This is, we figure that out, it's an E, say we want to play in the key of E minor. Well, all we have to do is count down from our pattern, and we know that G is going to be the relative major, play the same chords, and you've got your minor scale. So here's a demo in the key of E minor, and you can see how by using all the exact same chords as our G major scale, we can get a very different, much darker sound, effectively basically just by having our home bass on this E minor chord instead of our G major. Very different sound, right? It's using the exact same chords as the G major, but instantly it's much darker, it's much more intense. You know, you can hear a lot of different styles of music that this would be better suited for. And it's very simple because it's the exact same chords. Alright, so with that information right there, you can now play in any minor key instantly just by using your relative major chords. Now the only variation to this is if you want your lowest sounding chord or your most powerful and heavy chord to be your minor chord, and you want to start on that one. So in this case, we're going to start on our sixth string E minor. I'm going to stay in this key for now, and then I'm going to go up from there. So all of my other chords are going to sound higher than this one, which it gives just a different sound versus when you're starting off here. You know, this one's much fuller and more powerful and even darker. So all you have to do from here is use your same G major scale chords 
we're just going to go in a slightly different order. So if you want to take the scale and start on an E minor and have it be the lowest chord, then it's really easy. All you have to do is take that sixth chord and then play it below our first chord, which was going to be the G. So all that's going to do is it's going to be three frets up the neck from what your first major scale chord was. So if you had a G, you just count one, two, three, open, and then you've got your E minor. From there, it's just the exact same pattern as we had from our major scale. So in this case, it gives us two options of where we want to start or finish on. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to start on my E minor. And then just move up the scale exactly as I would if I was playing a major scale. But now I have two positions for this minor chord. So say we want to find the relative minor and play in the relative minor of A major. So we know we have our six note pattern. Here's our minor chord. This one's going to be an F sharp minor. So we know our relative minor to A major is F sharp minor. So now if we want to take this and we want to start on our minor chord, we just move it three frets down from this A there, one, two, three, and play the minor chord. So this is our F sharp minor, and then we just continue with the same chords for the major scale. And there you've got two different versions. You can start on the low chord, or you can end on the high chord, and then throw in those and have that be your home base and that's all there is to play in the minor key. So summary, if you want to learn your minor key, take your major key, find the sixth note, then just play the exact same chords as would be in your major key, focusing around the six. If you want to have that as the low chord, then all you have to do is move up three frets from your major key starting note. And just play the exact same chords as would be in your major key. Now the coolest rule to making chord progressions in the minor key is it really works well if you have what would have been the 5 and 6 chords of your major key. So here in our G major example, then we're starting on our E minor, and then we've got our C and D. These three chords, they're all in a single string, work really cool together and they can make some really interesting patterns by just experimenting around with them. You've got a really dark sounding interesting progression right there. So there's something to play around with. Minor keys are really cool and they're really easy to transition to once you know your major keys. So learn them and it'll add a lot more variety to your playing and make you a better guitarist. So that's all I've got to say for the series. I hope this gave you some really cool ideas on how to start making your own chord progressions and a lot of things to enhance your creativity and helped you understand how music works a little bit better. If you enjoy series style content like this, We've got a lot of great courses at 5minuteguitar.com. All our courses are very step-by-step. -step. We've done all the thinking for you, and it brings you from one level of guitar playing to the next in the easiest time possible, so you don't have to do any of the thinking. Just go along, and it's very simple and step-by-step -step instruction to go through. A great place to start is with our 14-day chord challenge, which is going to get your chord changes clear and fast and smooth, so you just sound good every time you pick up the guitar, and your chords are nice, and you've got a solid foundation for learning guitar. Check that out in the link in the description below this video. Subscribe if you haven't already to get my latest videos. Hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video.